You look too skinny, though. Thanks, You're always Kate. looking too skinny. Are you, you say not that eating? every time. I know, but I you are. I realize, I, you know. I'm a professional eater. <laughs> you look so skinny in person. Really? Are you Are you eating enough? Yeah, I'm eating enough. <laughs> okay. What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Brad Pitt's body transformation for Fight Club and Troy. So, these are highly requested topics. And I just want to delve into uh, his prep for those movie roles, um, how he achieved the physique he did, uh, what I think he did to prepare for it specifically, and uh, sort of delve into. You know, is this achievable naturally or not? So Brad Pitt's physique in Fight Club as well as Troy are two physiques that are often referred to as, you know, dream bodies of, you know, men far and wide. It's like their go-to aspiration. Many guys going to the gym is to look something like Fight Club or like Troy. And for some people, Fight Club is honestly kind of surprises me as the ideal body composition that people are striving for because it's often seen as unrealistic and unattainable other than those who are genetically elite but in fact i think it's the best representation of what even the most average guys could achieve just by a very very strict adherence to diet and training principles because it's not significantly over the top it's just very very lean and for brad pitt to get to that body composition did it require anabolic assistance I would refer back to him in his 20s so you can get a better reference point of what he's been walking around like for the entirety of his career prior to that preparation because it's not like Troy and uh, Fight Club were, I guess, objectively there early in his career because he's in his mid-50s now, but compared to you know, the average person, they're typically thinking your physique is going to peak in your 20s, not in your late 30s, early 40s kind of thing. And with Brad, that's when those roles were done. And if we go back to him at 25 years old in the dark side of the sun, we can see what he looked like at a much younger age when he was a less prominent actor. And you can see here he's still very lean. The guy is not muscular by any means, but he is fit and he has a visible six pack. So he's, you know, probably 11, 12 percent body fat, maybe 150, 155 pounds, something like that. He's uh He's not a twig, but he is um, obviously has a good baseline. And then moving forward to 1991 at 28 years old in Thelma and Louise, you can see here he's packed on a little bit of size. It's nothing substantial. It's not like he's gained 5 to 10 pounds of contractile tissue, but he is definitely bigger than he was at 25. And he still has the same level of body fat, if not leaner. Maybe the tan is just making him look leaner, but here... You know, the abs are visible again, and it's, you know, seems pretty effortless for him to maintain this body composition year round because year after year, movie after movie, he's maintaining borderline single digit body fat percentage, even when his roles don't necessarily call for him getting in insane shape. Moving forward to 1994 at 31 years old in the favor here, he probably looks um, similar to what he did at 25 years old again maybe lost a bit of size or just a bit of tan possibly from Thelma and Louise. Similar body composition again, not muscle bound by any means, but he probably doesn't even work out here. Here he is still borderline single digits though without even trying and year after year his body fat does not fluctuate, which is the indicator that we look to if this is something they're actually prepping for in between these roles on red carpets and images and you know paparazzi. He's never really you know, fluctuated away from this to a fatter body composition. So it kind of indicates that this is his just metabolism at baseline. Like he maintains a very lean physique year round. He's one of those individuals who's very gifted in that regard. He probably sticks to a reasonable calorie intake or else he'd gain weight, obviously. But just in general, he has a faster metabolism than most people. And he stays lean year round without really trying. Here he is at 1997, seven years in Tibet. Again, close to single digit body fat percentage. He's not muscle bound, but he's not skinny to the point where you would say this guy is a twig or a rail. Again, he has a body composition that most average men would aspire to peak at throughout <laughs> after years of lifting. And he's not even trying. He walks around like this year after year, even into his mid 30s. Going forward to 1999, Brad Pitt is 36 years old in Fight Club, and this is the physique that many men aspire to as the pinnacle of 
you know, shreddedness, being ripped, being muscular, being jacked. This is what most average men, you know, aspire to look like. And frankly, it's achievable for the vast majority of men, even those with fairly average genetics. If we look at some of the statistics behind Brad Pitt in that movie, he weighed 70 kilograms, which is only 154.324 pounds. So round it up close to 155. And he's five foot 11. So I'm sure most guys would consider even by average newbie gym goer statistics, 155 pounds at 5'11 is not massive by any means. And is certainly within striking distance of most people. Like I was a rail when I started and I was 138 pounds before I started going to the gym at six feet tall and getting, you know, to 155 lean is, <laughs> well, 155 shredded, I should say, is certainly a goal that most can strive to achieve within the first three to four years of natural lifting with intelligent programming and diet and adherence to that diet. And for many, they might even surpass that within the first couple of years. It's just that most people are never going to have the willpower to stick to a calorie deprived diet model enough to achieve this low of a body fat percentage. And purportedly Brad was five to 6% body fat in this movie. And while I don't necessarily think he was 5%, he's definitely in the single digits and he's really damn shredded. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And he's probably packed on maybe like five to seven pounds of actual contractile tissue since his other notable roles that I already went over, like seven years in Tibet and uh, Thelma and Louise, where he's definitely a bit bigger, but it's not like he's packed on 20 plus lean pounds. He's probably, like I said, five to seven pounds of more actual muscle and a similar body fat, maybe a bit leaner, but I think largely this is the tan, the being more muscular in general, bringing, you know, obviously that brings more uh, muscle separation, just being bigger at the same body fat percentage. And in these scenes, like I said, these muscle fibers are firing in a lot of these scenes. There's good downlighting. He has a really, really good tan in this movie, and he looks awesome. So going forward to Troy in 2004, he's 41 years old here, so you have to take that into account in terms of him being five years older than he was in Fight Club, so it's going to be a bit harder to pack on size while remaining lean. But with that being said, Brad Pitt's genetics are insane as far as metabolism goes, so... Um, for him, he was able to stay relatively lean despite bulking up a little bit. So the difference though, this is a five year time frame here and he's not significantly bigger. There's a lot of people that say he was 185 pounds in this role with a similar body fat than what he had in fight club where he was a lot of people say 160. What I could find was the 70 kilogram statistic about 155 ish. And in Troy, he does not look like he's packed on 30 pounds of lean weight. If anything, he looks maybe 10 to 15 pounds heavier at most, and that might even be generous. How much of that is actual contractile tissue, though, despite the fact that he has what appears to be a darker tan and a bit heavier downlighting in Fight Club, obviously they went out of their way to try and achieve the optimal scenario in Troy as well. And here, he just certainly does not look... 25 pounds heavier like i mentioned he'd probably be closer to 10 to 15 pounds heavier at most and that might even be generous and i think maybe five of those is actual muscle with the rest being intramuscular water glycogen retention it's hard to say exactly but it's certainly not 30 lean pounds it's <laughs> probably just him eating at higher uh, calorie allotment per day and holding closer to what appears to be 170, 175 pounds at most. And of that weight, how much is actual lean tissue? I wouldn't say it's over 10 pounds. It's probably five to seven pounds at most. And he's still lean. Don't get me wrong. He's very, very lean in this role still and is in the single digits. The downlighting is less complimentary to his physique. So it's making him appear smaller in the shirtless scene, in my opinion. But you can still see the ab cuts. They're there. He has a bit more mass on the chest and the arms, maybe. But even that is arguable, to be honest. Like in Fight Club, there are scenes of him in that, you know, the circle of fighters where he looks like a rail pretty much. But the scene in the apartment where he has really favorable lighting circumstances, he looks pretty close to what he is in Troy with maybe five to seven pounds less muscle at most. And that might even be generous, to be honest. I think it's probably um, he might be a few percent higher in body fat, maybe just a you know, a couple, maybe he's like 6% in Fight Club, he's like 8% in Troy, it's kind of tough to say based on the limited footage we have to refer to, 
and the lighting circumstances being completely different, but he's not a whole lot bigger. So is this indicative of natural progression? I think so. He has, you know, five years to pack on. Like, even if he did one lean pound a year, this is <laughs> pretty much what you can see in this uh, transformation from the five-year difference. And a little bit of that weight, I think, is just like intracellular water, to be honest. I don't think he's holding certainly not 20 plus pounds. He's maybe, like I said, 10 to 15 pounds more in weight. And some of that's going to be temporary weight. That's not actual contractile tissue, like I mentioned. So I think that is definitely um, supported naturally. I don't think he used exogenous anabolics to achieve this transformation from Fight Club to Troy. And then moving forward to Fury, like I mentioned, I don't think his body composition really improved. If anything, it's just going to require more effort and adherence to being insanely strict to maintain a good body composition as you get into your 50s which is probably what brad had to do to maintain a you know semi really good physique with low-ish body fat percentage and some mass still at 50 plus years old brad along with other members of the cast had extensive training for the role we went through a process as a military or as tourists, of course, but as the, as the military grows, they're designed to break us down and, and build us together and, and develop a pecking order and a working a methodology for working together. Honestly, the thing that impressed me most about Brad's body progression over the years is not his role in Troy or his role in Fight Club is obviously very impressive because of the amount of willpower it would take to get to that lean of a body composition that's the most impressive of course but i mean the second most impressive i should say is his most recent role in once upon a time in hollywood there's actually a scene on the rooftop where he takes his shirt off that apparently had a lot of people um gasping in the theaters and it's because this guy is 55 years old here and he still has visible abs and he looks not that far off from what he did in his 20s to be honest like obviously there's a bit more you know like visceral fat build up and more of a you know, rectangular body composition, just looking older in general, a bit more saggy and whatnot. But the level of muscle mass and the body composition in general is pretty damn similar to what he was in his earlier years. He's maintaining a visible six pack. He's um, has, you know, a body composition that people would strive to achieve even they're in their 20s and 30s. And most 99% of guys don't look this good even in their mid 20s or in their early 20s. And here he is still at 55 years old looking, you know, having a body that most people would, you know, kill to have. And to me, this is a testament not solely to his work ethic, but also largely to his genetics and a lot of people they're going to speculate around what kind of drug use he may or may not use to maintain this all the time but personally i think based on the fact that from day one he's been like single digit body fat percentage for years and only in the prior decade or so it started to really show on his physique where he's actually started to age a bit um I think his progression has been natural, even in his 50s, even to now. I think he has not used gear even once. I think perhaps he might have used something for Troy at most, or some will argue that he, you know, undoubtedly used something for Fight Club, and it's like, oh, you got to use Trend to look like that. But honestly, at 5'11", 155 pounds, that's not a physique you need to trend your mind out to in order to achieve. That's something that is very realistic with a strict diet protocol and being able to adhere to a steep calorie deficit after having a foundation of muscle tissue built. And clearly he's shown in the prior years that sustaining a single digit body fat percentage year round is, you know, easy for him for his entire twenties. He's, you know, visible six pack in all the time, never out of shape. And then for fight club, the role he actually has to build on his physique a little bit, it comes pretty damn easily for somebody who has genetics like his and is only actually trying to achieve a 155 shredded physique like that's very very realistic for a lot of guys and a lot of the guys people accuse of being fake naturals or you know 190 200 shredded at this you know uh eight nine percent body fat brad pitt is 155 here actually 154.324 to be exact to be shredded like that is completely realistic to expect naturally and anybody who can't achieve this just isn't willing to put in the work in my opinion because it's perhaps you won't look as good once you get to this body fat percentage um but you can certainly achieve this level of leanness strictly by having a very 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 dedicated diet regimen and having the foundation of muscle mass to support the energy expenditure 
once you get into that deficit and retaining a foundation that actually looks good and isn't just skinny fat once you actually get shredded. So that's what I think happened throughout his progression. I think he's been natural throughout these his entire career. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think there was any point in Brad's career that was probably enhanced in your opinion? If so, when? What do you think he took in particular? What was the red flag you saw that really indicated to you that that was the case? Uh, any and all comments are appreciated because they really do help the algorithm and push the video to a new audience when you guys do that as well as liking the video, subscribing, hitting the notification bell. Otherwise, you won't get notified when I post. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more deets, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, BitChute, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. Subscribe to the mailing list if you want to get notified anytime I put out an article with a more pharmacology intensive topic that you might want to delve into the clinical trials and studies I reference for your own personal research and have the articles be much more professionally and concisely laid out with table of contents, subsections, etc. that might be of interest to you for your own further research. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.